the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you again for another uh, time of teaching on tonight. It's our Wednesday night Bible study. Thank God for every person that's here. Thank God for our viewers. Thank God for those who will come by and will view the video. And as well as uh, viewing the video, I just want to tell you that God is doing great things. And if you want to be a part of the great things God is doing, then it's now time to find that place, the place called there, the place where the Lord can speak to your heart as well as speak to your mind. The place where change will take place for real in your life and you will have no worries about your critics, no worries about people who hate on you, or no worries about folks who totally disagree about who you are, what you are, as long as you know that the God you serve is the head of your life and the keeper of your soul, and you know that you are saved not by your works, but you are saved because of his grace. Listen, I want to say greetings again to every person. Uh, thank God for the people that will be tuning in and viewing. I pray, we pray rather, that you will be blessed, that you will be enlightened, and that understanding will be more broadened so that you will be able to understand the scriptures even more clear. You all pray for me tonight uh, as I begin to start teaching because I don't want to get into a hoop. And I want to kind of save myself uh, for different occasions. So with that being said, if you will, and you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, and on tonight, I want to talk about two words. Speak, Lord. Those two words. Speak, Lord. The reason why I have it in my heart to deliver a message to you all and to God's people is because we're truly living in a day where the voice of the Lord is not being spoken like it ought to be. We're living in a society where people are not as trained to hear the voice of God that are not a part of a particular church to per se. It, you don't have to be a part of a particular church, meaning you don't have to be a reunited with Christ ministry for God to speak to you. The voice of the Lord can come where you are. The Spirit of God is so free. And the Spirit of God is not bound by limits. Neither is the Spirit of God bound by religion. God is beyond religion. God is deeper and bigger than just a geographical setting. He does not operate in one place and can't operate in a whole nother place. So the God that you serve, the God that is the God of your life, you might want to leave your volumes kind of up some. It's okay. It's okay. But the God you serve and the God of your life is a God that steps outside of everything and everybody at any given time and can come to any person no matter who you are, where you are, and why you are where you are. So the God you serve can come and visit. One thing I have learned about the Lord is that the Lord does the choosing and the Lord does the picking. He chooses who he chooses. He picks who he wants to pick. Speak, Lord. Sometimes in the middle is the problem and where we have a bunch of conflict going on. It's conflict sometimes because in the midst of the speaking and the one who will be speaking, which is the Lord, there's conflict. 
because of how an individual has been taught how God speaks. God will speak to you or speak to me or speak to any individual or persons. He can speak to us through sound. He can speak to us through signs. He can speak through accidents. He can speak through mistakes. He can speak through mishaps. He can speak just out of the blue. He can speak in the midst of any trial, any test, any situation, any circumstance, any dilemma. He can speak even when nothing bad is going on. He speaks to us and he speaks to whom he chooses to speak to when he wants to and then when he gets ready to. The question is, have you been taught how to make yourself available for when he do have to speak? On tonight, you'll see a story in chapter 3 of 1 Samuel about a child by the name of Samuel. And if I give you a little history background here, in the first chapter, you have a man who is named Elkanah or Elkanah who have two wives, Penal and Hannah. He loved Hannah above the other one, so he gave her better gifts. He gave her more than what he gave the other wife. Hannah was barren, could not have children. The Lord had her womb shut up and closed where she was barren. So the other wife would mess with her while her husband will perform his role and his duties. She will come out of the chambers and brag about being with child. She will sit at the table and she will mock her about being barren, but yet she's fruitful. So Hannah decided one day that she would get fed up and she would get sick and tired. And in that day and time, it wasn't a custom for women to go up and to worship without their husband. But this, in this function and at this conjunction, she gets to the place in her life where she's just fed up with what's going on. So she decides that she will do something about what she's fed up about. And instead of becoming a prick, in the side of the adversary, she decided to become a thorn in the enemy's side and pursue God. So she goes up to the temple and she prays to God. Eli, the priest, looks at her and the first thing Eli says is, what's your business being here? You drunk? She said, no, my Lord, don't mistake me for one of those drunk women. But I'm a woman of a sorrowful heart. You're looking at my countenance. You're judging based off of my mouth moving, but no words is coming out. So, Eli, even though you're not even in the right position as the man of God, as the priest, the high priest, to be able to see like you need to, because I have a need that I need from God. I don't want God just to move, but I want him to speak. And watch this. God began to speak to her through Eli. And he said, daughter, whatever it is that you have petitioned the Lord, be it known to you, I'm parenthetically uh, paraphrasing it, but be it known to you, daughter, that whatever your petition is, God have heard your petition. Now, you can't go and talk to God and God not talk back. What makes us what we feel as if he has not spoken to us is because of how we view what we pray for. We pray for something or we talk to him about something and ask for something 
and because in the middle it don't look like it's going to happen. Or we come from prayer and we still see that problem. Well, we haven't wait for him to speak. So she gave a petition to God. Rather, the Lord gave her a yes or no. The answer came through the man of God. God straightened him up enough just to get him to speak and say that your petition has been heard. By this time next year, your prayer will be answered. Whatever it is you ask God for, it's going to take a process. It's going to take a time. But in between the speaking and the Lord fulfilling what he spoke, in between is the process. And in that process, it might be a breaking going forward. It might be a pressing to go forward. Or it might be that you got the plunge in order to go forward. But whatever it is, or you might got to plow through to get to the Lord. But whatever it is that you got to get through, you must by all means necessary. Somebody say get there. Yes, you got to get there. So in chapter 2, God visits her, answers her prayer, give her a child just as promised. And in verse 1, how pray and say it. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. Before God get rid of speak. She was exalting God. But at some point her exaltation. Was bring about offense to somebody else. So the spirit of God began to help her to realize in her prayer. That you have to be careful how you pray and give God exaltation for what he has done. You don't have to go and stroke God. And you don't have to appease him. You don't have to woo and soothe him with fancy words and articulate speeches. And you don't have to go and give him eloquence and, and give him all of this. Just if you can't talk right, if your grammar is not correctly, and you can't even utter a, 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 a correct sentence. Just the way you are, that's the way you come. And if, oh Lord, thank you is all you know, then stick with the, oh Lord, thank you. Because in the, oh Lord, thank you, he's speaking back saying, you are welcome. Come on, talk to me. He's saying, you are welcome. Oh Lord, I praise you. He said, but not how I praise you. I praise you more than you think you can praise me because you fearfully and you wonderfully made. And when I made you, I put my hands up and said, my God, my God, I'm a bad God. I, I, I fashioned you with my hands. That's why I say you are my handiwork. I didn't rush and create you. I took my time and I, I, I put every string of hair on your head and I blew on it to see if it would go forward or backwards or would it stick out like a poking pine. And no matter if they call it nappy, I call it you. And he said, well, how I made you, how I formed you, rather, is straight or not, curly or woolly, locked or not, it doesn't matter. I made you, and when I made you, I praised the making of you. I wonderfully made you with my own hands, you my handiwork. That's why angels can't understand why I adore you as a person so much. That's why Satan can't understand why I love you like I love you as a being. Why? Because it was somebody that came and took your place to show me as God how to really love. I, I, I knew what love was, but I don't want to just know what it was. I need to know what real love is. And there's no greater love than the love that my son had. So when you accept him, watch this. And when you come to the knowledge of who he is, now I love on you just like I love my son. It's okay if you and my son become equal. 
It's okay if you and my son become one. Because I'm the only one that can speak those things over your life which be not as what? Though they are. I'm the only one that can declare when the weapon formed that it shall not prosper. I am the only one that can speak out of the clouds and I can make even earth itself tremble just at the sound of my voice. I'm the only one that can call for peace to come out of that storm and say peace be still and it will stand still. I'm the only one that can get in your mouth now and use your vocals to speak like me and you can see results. But all I need you to do is tell me, speak Lord. That's what I need from you. I need you to tell me to speak. Because if you tell me to speak, then my next question is, can I use you to speak through? If you tell me to speak, my next question from that is, will you let me speak? If you hold me down, I can't speak like I need to. But if you just step out of you and let step in me, I can speak the way I want to. Watch this. In chapter 3 of 1 Samuel, you find that the child Samuel he ministered unto the Lord before Eli. In other words, he had to go up and he had to serve in ministry. He had to serve. He served Eli, but he was ministering to God. So for people who are in a setting called church, it's okay. I need to reassure them. It's okay to serve. You're not serving the man of God or the woman of God to per se as if they are God. But what you're doing is you're rendering service unto them in the reverence and fear of the Lord. So what you do for them, God in return turns around and he remembers your labor and he does it for you. So when things come against you, God will speak on your behalf. When folks say, I don't understand why they still stuck like they are. Why they still following that person like they are. Why would, why they still doing what they're doing. Well, it's because you have not yet built relationship. You built religion, but you didn't build a relationship. When you step outside of religion and get a relationship, relationships just can't be broken that easy. I'm here to give you a philosophy. Don't you tie a knot. Even the tightest knot cannot be untied if love is tight and strong enough. I don't care how long you sit there, you'll wear yourself out trying to untie this knot. You know why? Because every time you nudge, it tightens up. Every time you try to break it apart, it tightens up. It has a gravity that gravitates towards itself and it holds itself. Love is a core. You can't break open something that's the core of something because the core is what holds all of this together. Watch this. For God so loved the world, if love was not in the world, the world would not be held together. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Your heart might be your heart, but it don't sit on top of your forehead. It sits in the center of your chest. Come on, talk to me, somebody. So no matter how much you get your emotion broke, when you really take a look on the inside, your heart is still intact. My, my, my. God, this is good. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. He went and he ministered. In other words, that word minister means he served as a high priest, but he was in position as a young minister, a servant. And watch this. The word of the Lord was very precious, or it was precious in those days, meaning that it was rarely given. The word of the Lord was barely spoken because at this time, you got the voice of the Lord who has been shut up and silent for over 400 years. The children of Israel have just come through uh, bondage out of Egypt and have been free. Now you got them appointing the judges according to the Mosaic law. They got judges on the throne. You got Deborah around this time who is part of that, that, that seat. And coming up, who would be in a prophetic realm to become a judge as well as Samuel being a judge and a high priest at the same time. But here it is, Samuel is just a child. And the Bible don't tell us how old he is, so I can't tell you he's 15. The Bible just say he's a child. And when you look at a child, a child age goes from anywhere between 5 all the way up to 17. By the time they turn 18, they consider as a young adult. So we don't know because the Bible didn't tell us in Pacific what age he was. He just said he was a child that ministered before the Lord. And the voice or the word of the Lord was not really spoken. So for 400 years, God is silent. Now, can you imagine God getting silent and there is no word from the Almighty? Can you imagine God being so silent that there is nobody who can hear God speak? 
speaking because everybody have turned a stiff neck and their hearts have become so hard and they have become so consumed with their everyday living until nobody stops to say, wait a minute, I can't believe God haven't spoken yet. I haven't heard from God today. I'm here to ask you a question. If you don't hear from God on a Monday, but yet it's still, it turns around and it's Friday and you still haven't heard from God at all. You're not going to be concerned about why you haven't heard. Will you not go on a search on why God you haven't spoken? I'm here to tell you firsthand. I can't go too many days without God speaking. I'm about to go cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Y'all talk to me and tell the truth in here. I can't go too many days without the Lord showing a sign of something. Because the day that the Lord stops, I'm going to have a problem. I'm looking around like, where is God? Where is a word from the Lord? And where is this and where is that? I'm like David. I'll go chasing after God. I'll do just like Elijah. Go on the mountain looking for God. Go in the church house looking for God. Go in the fire. I'm going to get burned, but I'm going in the... God, are you in this fire today? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Go inside and look in a whirlwind. I know it might be busy around you, that whirlwind mean that a lot of stuff is getting out of control. But I'm going to stick my head in the wind and go like, this. God, is you in the wind? Is there God? Is you talk? Can I find God somewhere? And watch this. The question now for the 21st century is, who can we find God inside of? Come on, talk to me. Who is really hearing from God in this season? Who is really hearing from God in this life? Who is really hearing from God in this walk? I'm tired of hearing folks talk about prophesying cause and prophesying money, prophesying doom, I mean gloom and, and happiness and all of this. Can somebody tell me what is the word of the Lord for my life, for my soul, my spirit? Something on the inside of me is hungry and I can't seem to quench my thirst with water. I can't seem to satisfy my better with food. And guess what? Y'all, everything is starting to fail, but I need a word from God. Somebody say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. We need God to speak. And if God ain't speaking, that's what we need to come to God personally and say, Lord, you might not want to speak to them because of whatever they got going on. But until they get themselves together, God, I need you to give me a word. I need you to speak to me. But I'm here to tell you, God will not speak to you outside of what he wrote. He will not speak to you anything contrary to his very own word. So when other folks try to tell you what the will of God is for your life, concerning your life, you need to tell them, wait a minute, if God have not spoken it to me and, and you coming to confirm it to me, then I need, I got a problem. I need to put you on hold and I need to go and you like Hezekiah, turn my face to the wall and I need to go and ask God first because what you just told me is something that I don't want to hear. So I'm not uh, saying that I'm refusing you. I'm only going to put you on mute. Mm -hmm. That's why I took the remote is in my hand. I'm going to mute this conversation. I'm going to check with God. And if God don't talk, then I'm going to stay right there until he speaks. Come on, talk to me, somebody. That widow woman said, I refuse to move. I don't care how this unjust judge is. I don't care how hard, hard or he don't believe in my God. I don't care who the judge is. If I got to come day in and day out and nag this man and just sit here alone and make my presence known to him, guess what? I'm going to get what I want. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When the Shulamite woman, when her son died, she didn't go see her husband. She didn't go see the witch doctor. She didn't go see the soothsayers and the naysayers. She didn't even go see the witchcrafters. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When her son died, she went and found the same man of God who had told her what the word of the Lord was. Because it was Elijah that told the Shulamite woman, for you bringing me into your house and treating me properly and treating me right with care. Guess what? Whatever you want from God, he said, by this time, next Next year, it shall be done. When she said to herself, and she said she need a son, that man told her, you're going to get just what you said. And guess what? Did God do it? Yes, he did it. He did it through the word of his promise. He did it through the mouth of the prophet. Come on, talk to me, somebody. That's why the scriptures say, when you believe a prophet, so shall you prosper. But wait a minute. If I believe a prophet and I prosper, what if I believe a lying prophet? You prosper again. You profit off the lie. You prosper, out rather, off the lie, just like you prosper off the truth. But one thing about a lie is the lie breaks off and falls off. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Because why? It seems like the world has been prospering for years based off of lies. What do you mean they're prospering? I don't see prosperity in a lie. Let me help you understand something. The scriptures say, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious of the workers of iniquity. For soon they shall be cut down like the green grass. Fret not thyself because of he who prosper in his way. So don't tell me that they cannot prosper. A lie can prosper. A, a truth can prosper. Somewhere down the road, something is going to fall off. You can't let the truth fall off because why? The truth
truth can stand. The lie falls off because to tell that lie, you got to keep telling another lie. And I'm here to tell you, so many folks have been tricked. So many folks have been bamboozled. So many folks have been bewitched. All in the name of God. So many folks have been tricked into going into their pocket, writing out checks in the name of who? God. So many folks have been told that if you sow a seed of this amount, God going to give you that amount. All in the name of God. So when you look at it, you got to come to the conclusion that if it really is God speaking, then I need to go and try the spirit to see whether it be of God. I don't need somebody saying something is of the Lord, and yet I have no knowledge of if it is or it isn't. Don't go believe in something that you never tested for yourself. That's why he say in Malachi chapter 3, he say, prove me therewith and see will I open up the floodgates of heaven, pull you out a blessing that there won't be room to receive it. How can you prove him? You prove him that word therewith is whatever you have. You prove him by testing him. Try him. So here Samuel is about to get ready and hear something. And I'm clearing the clothes here. Because I'm not, I'm going to make this a part one so we can come back next Wednesday and do a part two. Samuel is about to come into something that he had no knowledge of that would happen for him. The word of the Lord is not popular because people are not hearing from God in those days. Notice what the scripture said in verse 1. There was no open vision. First, we got two problems. The first problem is that in those days, God's word was not being spoken. Now, that's a problem. Now, the second problem is, is that there's no open vision. Without an open vision, there's no open manifestation. Because the scripture said, without a vision, the people shall perish. In other words, they fall away. They waste away. We have had visions as leaders to build mega churches. But the coronavirus, the COVID virus have come through here and shut down a lot of church period. Now you have people who are struggling to even get back up and get in a church building. Watch this. What was the open vision? If it was an open vision, we would have seen what was getting ready to come. Was it not already spoken? It was already spoken. That if you be willing and obedient to do all that I command you this day in Deuteronomy, blessed shall ye be in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, blessed when you go, Bless, bless this and bless that. Bless the fruit of your cattle. Bless the fruit of your, your wives' wombs. And bless this. And God said, bless, bless, bless. But if you will not obey every commandment that is written in this book of the law, not just the Ten Commandments, but every book and every part that they got a thou shall and a thou shall not. He said, curse shall ye be. And then he said, I will bring upon the land plagues. So much so that it will be plagues that are not even written in this book. So that means there are some things that God have held up that he have not even put in here for us to read about. But he held them and said, if the people don't continue to be willing and obedient to do as I asked them to do. And all I asked them to do is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy strength, and all thy soul. Everything that's in you, love me. Because if you do me like this and love me like this, you should be able to love the next. Don't tell me you love me and you ain't even fasting your eyes on me. You see my glory, but you don't know how I look for real. And then hate somebody you see and can't even see that that's my glory. So really what you're looking at is a figment imagination of your mind calling it my glory. That light bulb might be bright, but that's not my glory. So don't try to lessen me to a watch, because I'm not wattages. Man, I wish I could talk to you here. I'm not a 40 watt, I'm not a 100 watt. I'm just God. I don't flicker and I don't come on and come off. Come on, talk to me. I'm always staying on. I'm the light of the world. Amen. Come on, talk to me. So Samuel is about to get something that he was not preparing himself for. Neither was he being taught that this is how it's going to come. Eli did not do his part and teach Samuel how to listen for the voice of God. Because why? Eli was so much concerned about his sons. He had two sons. And he was so concerned about them fulfilling the office of him when he passed on and move on. So he was like, I'm going to let my sons operate. But don't you know? It may not be given to 
the person that looks like they should be the rightful heir, heir to something. And God can take that and say, because you are rightfully the heir to this, you don't appreciate nothing. I'm a heart reader, so I see in your heart you wicked and perverse. You don't appreciate nothing. So I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to the one you least expect. So the one that's coming up in the house and not even really blood related is going to be the one I'm going to cut a covenant with. So watch this. God couldn't cut a covenant with Eli's sons because his sons was doing strange things and offering up strange fire unto the Lord. And God knew their hearts. So God knew one thing, Eli, you taking it easy on your boys. But I thank you for staying on Samuel and making sure he keep it right. So Samuel is ministering before the Lord. He's serving Eli and doing what he's supposed to do. And in verse 2, and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim. Not only was Eli's eyes going dim in the natural but he was also going blind in the spirit. It's one thing to lose vision, but it's another thing to lose sight with the vision. If you lose sight of the vision that you had, then you might as well get ready and give it up. That's why you find so many people who have sinned and fallen short of the glory but don't get restored because they ear God. They lose sight of the vision. Why they in the midst of their fall. I don't care how much you fall. You better keep your eyes on the vision. Amen. Because if you don't put, keep your eyes on. The vision is not building something that's already built. The vision is keeping your eyes on Christ. The author and the finisher. He is the vision that we look. Let us look unto Jesus. So when you visualize something. You should visualize seeing Jesus. When you visualize something, you should visualize getting to Jesus. I don't care if you Jehovah Witness. I don't care if you First Presbyterian. I don't care if you Lutheran, Catholic, Baptist, non-denomination. I don't care if you independent denomination, independently owned, incorporated, ministry, uh, self-owned ministry. I don't care what we are, Kojic, Baptist, anything, don't matter. Antioch, it, uh, CME, AME too. It don't matter, but the only way to get there and keep the vision alive is that Christ got to be your son. Amen. You got to have him in your sight. You can try and decrease or you can try and, and, and dissect in your mind that he is not. He is not. But I'm here to tell you he'll turn that thing around and show you that he is torn. T-O-N. In other words, you will not say what he is not when the scriptures say every knee bows. Amen. Every tongue confesses that he is. And when that weight get on you, you ain't lifting that. Samuel Hear the voice. Either eyes is going dim. He could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Samuel was knocked out sleep. Eli eyes is going out. He's losing sight. He's losing vision. Now. He can't even see. And then he can't even see that while he's losing it, the house of God is losing it. Right where the Ark of the Covenant is that's supposed to be protected by the high priest. He can't even see that it's going to be exposed. But we have to be careful and that's why I tell myself, playtime is over. You done played in your 20s and your early 30s, but playtime is over. You can't play now. Because what God was so gracious then, you know more. So to whom much is given, much more is required. You can't play with this now. You have to either do it or your eyes go dope. You, you go dim rather. Your eyes go down, you lose sight. And when God erased the will to want to do from you, you'll be a proverb. You become as a used to be a waste. I, I refuse, I want you to hear me, to become like Moab, a wash pot. People of God, you got to refuse to become a used to be, a half being, when you serve the Lord. Say that, I refuse, I refuse. to be a used to be, be a or a half being. Half. See, why I'm telling you to say that? Because Satan wants you 
to enjoy slipping and dipping. He wants you to enjoy one foot over here and the other foot over there. The devil is a liar. Why hell myself losing sight of what God has in store for me because my because life itself get hard. That's part of God's word. That in this world you should have trials and you're going to have some great tribulations. Be a good cheer. For I have overcome the world. In me, you're going to have peace. Now, that's too much to know. To let the life circumstances cause you to fall and you drop your head and take your eyes off the lifter. Samuel lay down to go to sleep like any child should and would. That the Lord called Samuel that night in verse 4. And Samuel said, here am I. He ran to Eli. Because that's who he was used to hearing. It's one thing when God is coming after you and calling you. And the first thing you do in your house as a kid is say, Mama, you called me? I used to have those moments a lot. I used to be in the in the bedroom in the little shotgun we used to live in on Abbey. I call it a shotgun because the rooms was over here apart from each other. And you look from the front door and see straight through the back door. And if they open up the back door while the front door open, you can see straight through the whole house. That's just how we live. Shotguns. So, mama used to be in the kitchen. And the wall barely even separated anything. At one side of the kitchen wall with a dough that didn't one even up. But the back door was like right there. So your front door right there with a screen net on the side. Mama one day was in the kitchen and she was just cooking. I remember she cooking what Shirley cooks. Sweet potatoes. But she had hot water cornbread. Greens with some salt bat fat and some pig skin in it. Y'all know pig skin kind of rolls up. Got to cook them for three, four hours. Mm -hmm. And she was slew footed in the kitchen cooking. And I heard some say, Dairy wine? And I went running. I said, Ma'am? She said, Boy, I ain't call you. I could have sworn I heard her call my name. The church I grew up in didn't teach me how to hear the voice of God. The church I was coming up in only taught me how to hear from the devil. You better start telling that devil when he talks to you, the devil is a lie. And if you hear somebody call your name, you better rebuke it right there in the name of Jesus. Because that's a familiar spirit. That's an unclean spirit. They didn't never know how to really hear the voice of the Lord for themselves. So, I heard it again. Dear Wayne, I dropped that Nintendo 64. In the kitchen, I go, ma'am. That's how we had to reply and respond to the call. You couldn't say no, yeah. You get your lips fixed. You couldn't say, what's up? What you want? You couldn't even call your mother by their real name. Callie, you call me? Oh, you get beat. Right there with the skillet, the pan, the ball, the water, and all. Child, child, child protection won't come in. Because they felt like if you did that, you disrespected your mother. So I said, ma'am. And I'm running in there. She said, boy, what have you done to make the Lord call you like that? What? She said, if you hear that again, you just say, yes, Lord. I ain't finna say no. I ain't finna say no. Yes, Lord, I'm a kid. I'm trying to enjoy my childhood. I see the stuff he doing to you in church. <laughs> Got you speaking in another language and <laughs> you putting all all on us in the middle of the night at one o'clock in the morning praying for us and and we smelling like Crisco oil. <laughs> the walls got oil on them and I'm looking around like, Lord have mercy, who the sweated in him? And, and yet still. I didn't know she was grooming me, 
preparing me, but making me ready for when he speaks. If the appeal of Sunday, if the anointing is not already on your life because he preordained it and he predestinated it, then you're going to struggle trying to hear him. Hear God. When the anointing of God is already on your life, all he's going to do is just call you by your name. And when he calls you by your name, your spirit will pull you and your feet will run to it. I ran to what, like Samuel, I ran to what was coming. Because again, I wasn't trained to hear his voice. I was only trained to know the voice of the devil. And that was always bad stuff. Trying to interview him. The devil said, go down to this store and buy them dice. That's the devil. I didn't know we can take dice and put them in the street and use them to play games. You know, and play high scotch with a bouncing ball. If the ball bounces, that's the devil. Can't shoot hoops. That's the devil. Can't wear your socks and show them. That's the devil. Sin, sin, sin. Saints of God, turn off those television. Ain't nothing but the devil in the TV. So I was scared when the TV came on. But I love video games. When my mama finally bought me a game, she said, I don't care what that pastor say. My children ain't finna grow up just all in the church and don't know nothing else. I'm going to let them experience life. But the fact of the matter is this. Is that the way we grew up, she, 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 she taught us to hear when he speaks. She said, when you hear it again, you better say, speak, Lord. I was scared to say that. And I was scared to say, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, yes, Lord, that's too much. Because I, I saw yes, Lord, in church. And yes, Lord was Holy Ghost stuff. Oh, whoo, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, whoo. And I was like, mm, I don't want the yes, Lord. Because I don't, don't want to be shaking and trembling and, and my hands catch on fire and I can't put them out and I walk through the house like this. I don't know what's going to happen in that word, yes, Lord. So, he didn't come back the third time. Thank you, Jesus. I was off scot-free. But he waited until I got a little older. And that same voice called my name twice. Derek, Derek. I said, well, not now, Lord. And took off running. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. I took off running because I wasn't afraid. I just wasn't ready. Samuel hears God for a second time. And Eli says, when he come running, I didn't call you. And he answered, I called you not, my son. Go lie down again. Samuel did not yet know in verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He didn't know the Lord. But wait a minute. Did it say that he ministered unto he ministered unto the Lord? See, you can be shot. You can be ministering unto something that you have no knowledge of. That's why we got to stop hoopalizing folks all the time and learn how to teach and be apt to teach. So I want to teach you how to hear God's voice. God's voice speaks through different channels. But are you listening? God's voice can speak visually. But are you seeing? His voice can speak through the wind. But are you trying to grasp it? He can speak through your intellect. But are you trying to understand him? He speaks in this book. But are you trying to read about it? He's speaking through Katrina. He's speaking through Laura. He speaks through 9-11. He's speaking through Trump. Yes, he is. He's speaking through Obama. Why he's behind the scenes. My God today. He's speaking, but the question is, is we listening? Are we hearing God? He's speaking in people's cancer. He's speaking through folks who have high blood pressure. He's speaking. He's speaking in, in ways that, that, that you're going to have to come out of religion just to hear him. You're going to have to tear up the tradition and religion if you want to hear it from him. Amen. If you want to know how he's going to speak, best thing to do is put yourself in position. Now the question becomes, and I'm closing, how do I put myself in position? I'm glad you asked. This is how you put yourself in position. You start by saying, Lord, I confess that I don't hear you, but I want to hear you. I'm saved because I asked you to come into my life, but I don't hear you, and I would like to hear you. But God, I need to be real honest. I'm afraid to hear you. 
Because I don't know what you sound like. And I don't know what you might say to me. But please, Lord, whatever it is you have for me, speak to me. Go, through, go around my fears or go through my fears and speak to my confidence. Whatever it is that makes me comfortable, speak to me right there. So if you have to wait till I lay down and speak to me in a dream, let me know and assure me when I wake up that it was you. If you got to speak to me while I'm driving through a song, then speak to me. And when I park my car, I need to know it was you. It don't matter who you are, where you are right now. God can speak. It don't matter what you're doing. He can stop time just to speak. Do he want to talk to you? Yes, he do. He loves you. Everything he got to say ain't always bad. He's a God that's full of hope. And sometimes he just want to reassure you of these 66 books that this is nothing but a book full of love. And when you read everything in here, you might read something that look bad, but don't close the book. Go ahead and finish it out. You come to find out that it's love. You come to find out that he loves you. He loves you in spite of your crack. He loves you in spite of cocaine. He loves you in spite of your alcohol. He loves you in spite of being promiscuous. He loves you in spite of having all these sins in your life. He loves you beyond the, the, the shacking, if that's what they want to call it. He loves you in the midst of fornicating. He loves you in the midst of adultery. His love is so much greater that he still speaks and watch what he says. Don't you be messing up. I still love you. I'm still going to give you another chance. I'm still going to wake you up to give you a fresh start. I'm still going to cause my word to create a platform where you will wake up to new mercy and compassion and it will be renewed day by day in your life. Don't give up where you are. Don't give up. If he, you haven't heard from him today, wait on it. Though his word may tarry, wait for it. And while you're waiting, you do good. Because if you wait on the Lord, he'll strengthen your heart when he get there. He will talk to you about everything that you felt weak about. He'll talk to you about everything that you was confused about. He'll talk to you so clear that your heart will be like those two men was on the mayor's road. Did not our hearts burn when he talked with us? He'll open your eyes in what he's talking to you. Somebody today, he's speaking, but you just need to slow down enough to hear to see or to either feel. Let's pray before we close. Gracious Father in heaven, we come to you today. We expect you to speak, not because we want to hear something to go and run and tell somebody, but because we need you to speak to us as individuals. Speak to our minds, speak to our hearts, speak to our soul, speak to our spirit, Whatever it is that you want to convey, Father, you can do it in me. As an individual, I say, here I am. We stand as individuals today saying, here we are as individuals. Don't speak to the me, but speak to the I that's in me. And I guarantee you, there will be a response. Thank you for responding to the call when we call you. But now, God, you're calling for us, and we are responding to the call like an emergency ambulance. We're responding to the call like a 911 dispatcher. We are responding to the call. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us get ready to be dismissed. Amen. Praise God for you.